Hi everyone, Tanya here. Welcome to my channel. So happy to have you here. For today's video, we are going to be doing a kind of meal prep or meals for the week, but the I guess the challenge of the week or what we will be doing is that we'll be um, using up our shelves. So whether that be my pantry, my freezers, my fridge, basically I'm not going grocery shopping except for milk pretty much. But other than that, I'm not getting any extra produce. I'm not going to the discount store. I'm not going anywhere. And I'm just going to use up what we have. The reason I'm doing that is for one, I just want to use up what we have to really make sure I'm getting all the stuff out of my freezer. Cause sometimes you forget, I feel like, or, you know, just to use that what we have really go through and be intentional of trying to use up that stuff so nothing goes bad or expires and things like that but also financially because trying to save money we've had some really kind of big expenses lately so i'm really trying to cut back on our groceries budget when i can and try to still make pretty healthy or somewhat simpler meals. If you are interested in simple frugal living, I recommend that you please subscribe if you want to. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for joining me here and let's get into it. And so today is Sunday when I'm starting to film this and I'm gonna just do some easy quick prep for the week. Things that you may have seen me do um, on my channel. So I'm gonna be doing things like boiling eggs for the week, but I will also start off by showing you my freezers and my fridge and my pantry to kind of see what we're working with. And we're actually not too bad. So let me show you what we have and then let's get into this video again. Thank you so much for joining me and let's get into it. All right, so here's kind of what works as our pantry. As you can see, I think I need to do like a pantry organization. <laughs> but we have mainly here is more ingredients really. So on the back, there's things like shredded coconuts and chocolate chips, things like that, or some spices, some almonds. So it's not really like like meals, but you know, it's more ingredients. We also do have like lots of spices. Here we have some canned things. Sorry guys, it's a mess. And then down here I just have the bottom where it's onions. I think I only have like two potatoes left, so that kind of stinks for the week, or three potatoes. But we do have some noodles. And then up here, looks like we have some things for snacks. Oh, almost gone, but that's all right. We have some other things. I do have some quinoa, which is promising, <laughs> and some canned items, and we do have granola. So that's kind of good. Some snack items, and I think there might be some tuna in the back. So that's also promising. Can do some good things with that. Up here, I do have cereal, so I think that'll be good for breakfast meals. Try to use those. We definitely have some cereal, so I think that'll be good for that. Here is what our fridge looks like right now. So as you can see, I just have a little bit of baked potatoes left over. For leftovers, we ate everything today after church. Um, so produce, looking pretty good. We have some salad, so that's, I have three carrots <laughs> left. But I think there's still, there's still opportunity, lots of opportunity. Oh, this is good. We still have peppers, a lot we can do with that, and a few apples. And then we do have some cheese and things and tortillas. So yeah, and eggs. So you guys, I think this is not bad. We have a lot that we can work with, I feel like, for meals. And then here in the freezer, I do also have a few things. I have some meat for fish, tilapia. I think that's it for meat. Oh, I do have a few left of these. There's a little bit left in the bag of these chicken sausages. So this might be good for maybe two, one or two breakfasts and some sweet peas, popsicles. <laughs> so we'll see what we do with all that. So we are downstairs in the basement and we do have, we we're fortunate enough to have one of these big freezers. So, oh yeah, we have a lot in here. You guys, I feel like this is really good. We can do a lot for this week. So we have a good amount of bread, so we'll need to buy bread. Um, if you guys will see, like obviously this is not something we buy all at once. I can do a separate video on kind of how we use our freezer. Um, but you know, this is a nice thing to have if you're able to do it. But this is helpful for things like this where if we did, you know, like, not just because I'm doing a challenge, but if you were in a place where you didn't, you know, were not able to buy groceries that week, when you have things frozen from previous deals or bargains or whatever, it's nice because you have all that saved up. Um, we have things of chicken breasts, but I feel like I might be able to divide that maybe into two meals each, depending. So maybe, okay, so we have fish so much, so for protein and chicken. So, okay, we can do something with that. That's still good. We have some broccoli, some frozen veggies. Do we have any pizzas? Oh, we do have some pizzas in there. So emergency lunches if we need to. I gotta try to use up this stuff. This is, I think, frozen rhubarb from our garden as well as corn. 
So, oh, and then also some frozen tomatoes. This is all stuff from our garden. So, gotta try to use that up. All right, so not bad. I think we have a good place to start for every single meal for um, every single day this week, so. So the first thing I started my prep for the week is with a dozen eggs. If you have been on my channel, you know this, like Tanya. <laughs> but I always usually make a dozen eggs because I can add them to salads, add them to you know avocado toast in the morning. There's just versatile. I can make egg salad sandwiches, all different kinds of stuff for lunches. So I did that right away. And the Instant Pot, it takes me not very long at all. I can just kind of set it and forget it. It takes me about 10 minutes or less to cook like the whole dozen. I usually do about seven minutes. Uh, you know once it comes to pressure so not very long and then I just store them in the egg carton and put them in the fridge and they're good to go for the week so that's my first prep item for Sunday for the whole week one of the things I noticed in my fridge that I have a good amount of is mozzarella cheese um, I just got this week so I thought this would be a good way we also have a lot of tortillas um, so I thought making kind of like um, making like quesadillas kind of, or just making little, anything basically with cheese my kids really like, or also for pasta meals or anything like that, I'll be able to add mozzarella. So I just wanna prep this right now on Sunday so I don't have to worry about shredding it or you know, leaving it open and then it dries out. Has anyone like had that problem? Cause, so I'm just gonna make sure I shred this up right now, get it done and have shredded cheese for the rest of the week so that it's ready to go for my meals and snacks. Wow, that was an arm workout, but I got it done. Thank goodness, I just, this is that block of cheese. I got it into this little sealable baggie. I'm gonna put this in the fridge. Glad I got it all done. <laughs> Who knew the grating cheese was actually that hard? I guess maybe when it's all at once. This is why I like that I don't have to take out the grater anymore this week. I'm done with that cheese. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge and have that ready to go for the week. And to put that in time perspective, it took me about less than 10 minutes, but not actually that long. It just felt like more of a workout because the eggs are almost done. There's about a minute left on the timer. So in the time that my eggs are cooking in the Instant Pot, I got the cheese done. So now I'm gonna get ready to take out my ingredients to make yogurt for the week and show you guys how I do that. So let's talk yogurt, which has been a new addition to our weekly meal prep for I think the last month and a half or so. We've really liked it. The kids have been really liking it and the yogurt is really good. So, and it again, saves money, it's budget friendly, I think, because you get a large amount of yogurt and it just tastes really good. So the three ingredients that I use to make yogurt is whole milk and then I use um, just the regular whole milk. I have also done the ultra pasteurized, it just gives a thicker texture. And then obviously you need yogurt as the starter to make more yogurt. So I just have this regular yogurt. It's not vanilla flavored or anything, just plain yogurt. And then I do also use condensed milk. You don't have to use this ingredient, but I do just because it helps make it a little bit sweeter and a little bit like thicker and creamier. But again, this is optional. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. But these are the three ingredients that I do use whenever I make yogurt um, for us weekly. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. And if you have any other questions, let me know down below, but this is kind of how I do it. So once I have poured in, I do about seven or eight cups of milk, basically half a gallon. If you buy half a gallon, you just pour that whole half gallon in and I pour that into the Instant Pot, and then I just add in my yogurt, which is the most important part, because once I forgot to add it, so basically I was just heating my milk for eight hours. <laughs> so don't make that mistake, add in your yogurt. And basically you use about two tablespoons or so, you don't need a giant amount to get started. Uh, the yogurt, you know, the starter will kind of do its own job and it'll do everything, you don't need a ton. And then I add in about half a can most, usually a little bit less, like a fourth of the lechetta or condensed milk and I put that in there just for sweetness like I mentioned and I add that all in there and then I whisk everything up and I move on to the very difficult task of actually beginning the process. Guys, just kidding. Obviously, you know me. I like simple meals, so it's actually super easy. As long as you have an Instant Pot with the yogurt function, all you have to do is just push that button, and that's it. So I just, uh, once I have whisked everything up, I'm going to take, um, the other thing I want to remind you is I'm just going to be using a glass lid 
This is like an Instant Pot glass lid that my husband bought me. You don't have to use that for the longest time. I was just using like a plate, a regular plate that I was setting on top of the Instant Pot because you don't use the same like sealing and venting function like you normally do when you make Instant Pot recipes. We're not pressurizing anything. Uh, we're just using the yogurt function. So you just set the lid on top and you let it stay there the whole time again like i said or just a regular plate just to cover it and keep things warm in there because it does heat it up and stuff and then you just push the yogurt button and you wait eight hours and that's honestly the most difficult part is just waiting eight hours for your delicious yogurt to be done but that's it you mix it and then you wait what it looks like when it is ready after the eight hours yeah. <laughs> So the last thing that I'm prepping on Sunday for the week is hummus. This is also something we've been making weekly pretty much and we really have enjoyed. Um, I just use the garbanzo beans from Target or you know really anywhere you can get beans. I just use a recipe kind of on the back of that can to help me. And I've tweaked it over time. I kind of know it pretty well. But I just add in some parsley that we have growing fresh on a little pot in our house. Um, you don't have to add the parsley. I just noticed that I like the fresh taste and flavor that it does add so I do like to add parsley into mine and then you're just going to add basically it's nice you just dump everything in a blender and you blend it and you're done so once you have these ingredients you're set to go you know if you have multiples of this you can make this every week um, I add in a good amount of garlic because I love garlic and it's delicious <laughs> so I add in about two big heaping, heaping teaspoons but obviously you can make it more garlicky or less depending on your taste and then tahini is kind of what you really need mine is almost out but once you have this jar I bought this for I think eight or nine dollars at our local co-op it lasts you a very long time so I make like I said um, like, like one can of the garbanzo beans worth of hummus every week for us and we've had this you know for several months so it does last a long time and then you're just gonna pour in um, some water and then olive oil and then you're just gonna be blending this whole thing and it does take a little bit oh and also lemon I really like the lemon um, it adds a good amount of freshness as well it's just a good combo with all the other flavors and just blend everything and you might need to maybe like stop and kind of like you know push it down a little bit on the sides of the blender or add maybe a little bit more oil or a little bit more water to just kind of get the consistency right but that's basically it and then you blend everything and you're done and that's how I make our hummus every week all right so this is what the yogurt I forgot to film after it was in the, uh, in the Instant Pot, but this is what it looks like. And this would have been in the fridge. So for breakfast, this is Monday. Sorry guys, my morning voice. Uh, one of my kids is gonna have yogurt and granola, and the other one is having cereal, but if you can see, it looks, it gets kind of like thicker as it sits in the fridge a little bit too, but it's really good. So this is what it looks like, and you don't have to strain anything. I mean, you can if you want to. I don't know, but it's totally fine. You don't need to strain it. And it tastes really good. So we're going to have yogurt and granola. So for Monday's lunch right now, it's just me and my middle daughter home. Uh, we're going to have some of left, left, what's left of these nuggets from the gluten-free ones from Costco. Then some of the hummus we had yesterday along with some of these mushrooms we still have. And for fruit, we are going to have the one last lonely apple that was left in the fridge. So here is lunch for us. And yeah, I think not bad. <laughs> so dinner night, night number one um, for Monday, I found some hamburger buns in our freezer downstairs. So we're gonna use those for making burgers because I also found um, some Aldi burgers that I have. And if you saw my latest discount grocery food haul, you saw I had a giant bag of fries. So we decided to kind of do burger and fries, but on our own at home. Um, so I'm making the fries. And I decided today to try, I broiled them and now I'm kind of baking them again to bring them up to temperature. Um, and then I found some also very frozen, as you can see, I put on top, but still pretty frozen provolone cheese in our freezer downstairs. So I'm just gonna use that with our beef patties. So that's kind of what we're doing is being burgers and fries with stuff just in the freezer. So I'm going to use those up. These are the last of those burgers, so those will be gone. And then here's the cheese, the basically toppings. I found one tomato, 
tiny little sliver left of some lettuce. I know sometimes I can cilantro on mine and then some avocado people want as well as I'm gonna do garlic mayo. So I'm just gonna have some mayo mix in, some garlic into it, but basically kind of whatever I found and use that for our burgers and fries. And here's the, the end result, there's our burgers. Burger our fries are almost gone. This guy's helping me eat them. <laughs> I think he approves. And we also, the the cherry on top is that we saved leftover Chick-fil-A sauce Left packets so we use them with the fries. Here it says you just, ooh, I will show it to you in case you want a screenshot, but it's just three minutes at high pressure and then you let it release for 10 minutes. So not too long at all. But that's how I make our cilantro rice, but if you wanna try it out. So another thing we're having for lunch is we did have a good amount of tortillas and then I shredded that mozzarella cheese. So I'm just gonna make some quesadillas. Now I'm just gonna do cheese ones, but you can always add like a slice of like deli meat, whatever one you have. You can put like refried beans on the inside or just even um, like whole beans, whatever you wanna do in there. But we're gonna also have a few of these for lunch as well while the rice and meat we're gonna cook for later. Um, like late lunch dinner kind of. <laughs> And we're also having leftover burgers. So it's the burgers from yesterday. We have three leftovers still. So um, right now it's just me and my husband and my daughter home. She did not want a burger, but I decided to make one. I put some pesto I found in our fridge. So trying to use that up from Aldi. Put that on one side and then mayo on the other. Just the burger with some spinach on top. So that's gonna be lunch too. So for Tuesday lunch slash kind of dinner, I guess you could also have, we are making cilantro lime rice in the instant pot and then i'm um, once the rice is done in here i'm going to hopefully i think make some chicken in the instant pot just some chicken breast from the freezer so the way and i, I make it, with it the way i make it is i just have basmati white rice the one from costco so i just follow the instructions in the instant pot booklet for like the portions so i just use two cups of rice two and a half cups of water but then I squeezed in a lime, so one lime in there for juice. And then, I don't know, a fourth or maybe a little less of just cilantro. And I just chop up everything like the stem and the leaves. And then my assistant here <laughs> will help me put the cilantro in the Instant Pot. Not in your mouth, Goofy. <laughs> in the Instant Pot. So you put it in there and then I'll also just add some seasoned salt. You can just do salt and pepper or garlic just a little bit. I will put some. Yep, put it in there. And then just cook it, I think, what is it, on the instant pot. So this is what the rice looks like after it's um, done the three minutes and then sat for ten. And then all I do is just add in like a tablespoon or so of butter. Obviously you don't have to, but I do for rice. And that's it. Rice for dinner and probably lunches tomorrow is done. Super easy in the instant pot. Yay! So for Thursday dinner, I had some of the leftover rice from Tuesday. If you see, I skipped Wednesday. We ended up just kind of, we had eight and leftovers and we also went to our in-laws and stuff. And so we had food there. So that's why I didn't really have anything Wednesday. We just had leftovers. So Thursday, I made kind of this taco casserole. I took rice, I found some frozen corn, a salsa, and beans, and I mixed that all up in a bowl. And basically, like I said, I want to mix in the salsa. You can also add in tomatoes if you want and then add seasonings. You know, I just had salsa because I just wanted to use that up. I found that in the fridge and then it already kind of has the seasonings in there. So basically you mix everything together. And then I also added in um, cilantro into there and I had found some cheese. So I'll be using that and essentially making like a casserole. I layer it a mixture of like the rice and meat and you don't have to use obviously meat if you don't want to you could do it without meat or you could even substitute you know ground beef or turkey whatever it is you want to use um, but I just layer it and then I take some tortillas I also you know I had those in our fridge and I just kind of rip them up you could put them whole as well but I kind of like that better it helps it makes it a little easier for cutting but I just put that all in there and then build layers essentially and that's pretty much it. I just put cheese, layer of tortillas, and then I just repeat the layer as much as I can, kind of decide how thick you want it. Um, and then I do that and this was really good. I kind of just went with it. This is the first time I've made it like this and it was really easy. I liked it and it tasted really good. And I think this was an easier way to elevate like leftover rice instead of just having rice 
with chicken. This is just, it made it taste different and it was really good. So I recommend it. Here is the end result. After I baked it for 25 minutes, I believe in the oven, I sprinkled some cilantro on top and I'm gonna dig in and here's our dinner for today. So Friday dinner is another easy one. I'm using tilapia. You can use any kind of fish you want. And then I'm using quinoa for a grain. Again, you can substitute for rice, you know, if you want potatoes, whatever else you want to have, but I'm doing quinoa. I'll have a recipe I found it on Pinterest is like I think butter garlic quinoa. I'll have a link to it down below. It turned out pretty well. And then I also found some frozen broccoli from Costco. You can steam it. But what I did was I just baked it. I like when I bake something. If I'm gonna be baking something, kind of just like to bake multiple things that way I'm not like using you know like I don't know I just like to do it all at once in the oven it's just easier so for the broccoli uh, or any vegetable honestly that you have this is basically my go-to what I do when I'm baking it or like roasting it is just the veggie then salt and pepper you can add some whole garlic like I think I did here I added just some whole garlic you can add some garlic powder and then olive oil on top which helps to make it nice and crispy and then you just uh, mix everything up in there so all those flavors and the seasonings just basically cover the veggies and I set the veggies in the oven first to cook because they take a little bit longer depending again on the veggie but I put the veggie in first and then I do the fish again same thing basically is I just season it with salt pepper and garlic uh, but before I did the fish I did also do the quinoa again just have the recipe down below but it's really easy it's just quinoa water butter and some garlic salt or some garlic powder and salt um, super easy turned out really well for the fish again because I'm just baking and putting it in the oven I just seasoned it put it all out this is the topic I got at the, my recent Aldi grocery haul it's a good price and our whole family just goes to this it's enough for lunches and like leftovers the next day so it turned out pretty well and you just bake everything and put it all together so here's dinner I have the kids to their trays quinoa, broccoli, some of the tilapia, so dinner is ready to go. So today's Saturday, the last day of our <laughs> freezer pantry fridge challenge. And for breakfast, I'm making eggs, and then I'm gonna use uh, these from Costco. They're the Philly cooked chicken sausage. The kids really like these. My brother's over today as well. They all really like these, so I'm gonna heat these up in the frying pan once I get the eggs out. And that is our breakfast for today. So for the last dinner of the week, I am making this like tuna dinner. This is, again, really great for lunches or dinner. My family really loves this. So I use three cans of tuna for my family. We have three children and two adults. But again, obviously you can adjust it to how much you need. But I like it because it's really easy to make in the fresh. It has just a really fresh taste to it. So it just tastes so good. Um, and I just add tuna and some cilantro in there. I kind of eyeball it and then some garlic salt or some garlic powder sorry you guys some salt and pepper and some mayo i mixed it all up and then i did also use some of the leftover frozen corn that i still had and i added that in there uh, it's really great with corn i've also done it with avocado if you've never tried that before tuna avocado it's really good uh, i just didn't have any more avocado by the end of the week you know we were all out of a lot of produce so i just used the frozen corn it's really good you mix it all up and then I serve this so there's lots of different ways to eat it my kids eat it with saltine crackers which you will see at the end how after I finish it they eat it with saltine crackers as their favorite my husband likes to have tortillas that I toast and he eats it with tortillas I've also done it where I really like it if I have like lettuce leaves I will basically make like a little lettuce boat or wrap or whatever that's really good too if you're trying to cut back on carbs and things so it's really good that way, but I really recommend this one. Again, it's easy and it works well for lunches or dinner. Um, so yeah, I really encourage you guys to try this out. Oh yeah, and also lime, because that's delicious. It tastes so good in there. Or you can use a lemon too, whatever you have on hand. Um, but yeah, amazing. You guys have to try this out, one of my favorites. Do you like this recipe? Yeah. Me too. You too? <laughs> well, I'm glad Mama? you like it. Yes? What? I have a corn in here. You like the corn in there? I'm glad. <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys are like it. I think I have to get you seconds. Yours is almost gone. They really like this one. 
Hey guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video and seeing some of the meals that I came up with to empty out our freezer, our pantry, and our fridge. I think it was just a really good reminder that you're able to make really great meals with simple ingredients because sometimes I feel like you think, oh, there's nothing in the fridge and then you go out shopping. Um, but it really, your creativity really gets slow and you realize like what you can come up with. So if you can, share down below. Also, if you have any like favorite kind of frugal recipes or like what kind of do you do a fridge clean out or a pantry clean out at your house because I definitely recommend I think I'm going to do this like a monthly thing maybe at the end of the month or the beginning of the month um so yeah I'm excited and definitely we have more a lot more space in our fridge and our freezer so thank you guys again so much so much for watching if you are new I hope you take the chance to subscribe and I will see you in the next video bye everyone